Hello and welcome to Zuffenhausen, just outside of Stuttgart. Today is day five of our European road trip. You can check out the previous videos on the channel, but we're here at the Porsche Museum. It's a little bit windy outside. We're very excited because we're about to head inside and see what's on show. So this behind me is where it all started back in 1948 with 356, number one. Um, and it's just incredible to be stood next to this car. This is like the first Porsche um, that you could get. And it's such an elegant and sleek design. And the interior as well is just so simple, purely just steering wheel, gear stick and driver. Um, and I just think that's so special today in a day where obviously that would all be filled with computer screens and stuff like that. But I love the way the museum starts with the early days and then progresses to the later days. Um, but over here, we've got the car that was given to Ferdinand Porsche on his 75th birthday. And this is really, really special. 356 Coupe, and they've actually called it Ferdinand. Um, this is a 1950 car, um, but so, so special to see this. But this took my eye before, because it's not a car, it's a tractor. Now, growing up, I used to have a little pedal Porsche tractor, and it was, you know, model of this one, Porsche Diesel Super. Um, so, so shiny, um, but I love seeing stuff like this. Obviously, Lamborghini as well, starting off making tractors, but it's such a classic today. So we've got a 1964 Polizei Porsche 356. Now, I'll tell you from the fact, the Dutch police actually used 911s back in the day because they were one of the very few cars that could reverse quickly and not overheat, obviously with the engine being positioned at the back. Um, so there's a little fun fact. Got it from Boring Car Trivia by Richard Porter. Um, but this is very cool. Massive, massive siren on the top as well. So this was 1959 when the first 2 plus 2 seat position was created for, for Porsches. You know, a design which is still used today, so it's revolutionary. Um, but what a gorgeous colour as well. Next to another gorgeous colour. I think this is Gars Red actually. Um, very early, 911. So it was really special seeing this car actually because it was the first 911 as we know it. But it was actually called the 901 back in 1963 when it was first released. But Peugeot weren't too happy because of the three number name with a zero in the middle. So they started, you know, legal proceedings. And in the, in the end, in 1964, they renamed it the 911. Um, but yeah, this is a bit of an icon. It's what started it all. Um, and again, so simplistic. But for me, this is, this is the best formula. Moving to the 70s, this is where the real legends are. Fun fact, I nearly actually got run over by a 917 at Goodwood in 2019. But, you know, such an icon with its Le Mans history. Um, see what it says, 1969 model year. Um, these were really deadly back in their time. And you can probably see why just by looking at it. Um, but I think it's so nice that these cars are preserved in, you know, such condition. Um, absolutely stunning. Uh, moving to the later years, you can actually see the pink pig, the Porsche pig over there as well. Um, but I must move over to this Carrera RS 2.7. This really is an icon really is an icon 1973 um with the white and the green i feel like everybody sees this car and you know recognizes its history and you know the position it holds in the automotive world it's just stunning we've got a turbo cabriolet i love these cars I absolutely love them especially again in the guards red but wide rear wheel arches it's just oh i keep saying the word stunning and that's because every car on show here is stunning just absolutely gorgeous really beefy rear end as well um, the start of the the turbo era for, for Porsche and again an era which is still continuing um, but this is gorgeous as well if you want to talk about colors um, this is this is the bollocks it really is 3.3 litre coupe just look at the whale tail that's nice also got Alan Prost's McLaren from back in the day obviously with a Porsche engine but this was a surprise didn't expect to see this here but yeah, heading later on through the decades now to the 1990s. And we've got this. This is stunning. This is so nice. The wheel and color combo as well. This Carrera RS has got to be one of the nicest things I've ever seen. That rear wing combo, again with the wheels, with the blue roll cage, 993 shape, has to be one of the best for me. It's just, oh my word. Porsche 928 GTS. Obviously one of the very few V8 Porsches. Um, obviously Clarkson rated these very, very highly back in the day. Um, if you're a motor enthusiast, then I'm sure you know the story. 
Um, but again, here as well, 944 Cabriolet in that gorgeous Porsche colour that you know we still get today. Um, I really like that. I really, really like that. Again, I didn't actually know that you could get this as a Cabriolet in this, you know, variant. Big, big fan of that. So this here is a 1993 concept for the Boxster that came out later in the 90s. And it's nice to see one of these. Um, I think it was Wrench Sports last year. Um, they had one of these cars on show and I was quite taken by it. I wasn't there, I must admit. It was just on social media I saw it, but it's great to see this concept or study, as it says here, um, in, in real life, in the metal, the interior. It's interesting to see the elements that, you know, remained relatively similar, the elements that changed. Um, but I would absolutely love a Boxster and in the used car market today, they're quite attractive. Got a 911, 996, just casually chopped in half. But I like seeing stuff like this because it's interesting to see how, you know, everything's put together. And we've got Sally Carrera from the Cars movie, 1999. A bit like Meet My Hero, this, because growing up, I was, you know, quite often seen sat at the sofa obsessing over the Cars movie. So, yeah, great to see this. I think for me, the 911R is to be kind of the perfect recipe. So, you, you know, stripped back, magnesium roof, no air con, no sat nav. And, yeah, it's just fantastic. I remember Chris Harris's video on the, these cars back in the day. And yeah, he rated it really, really highly. 918 Spider behind me as well. There's just so much to see here. You just have to walk past, you know, such incredible cars because there's something better around the corner. Yes, please. In my opinion, 911s look so right in, you know, green paintwork, silver wheels. Although I haven't seen this type before. And if I step onto the rotating platform, try it to fall over, the interior is perfect as well. Wooden steering wheel, that's interesting. But just this, you know, seat cloth checkered I just think is just perfection it really is if I was to spec one it would be similar to that so we're climbing aboard the Boxster now four litre Boxster Jacob's getting in passenger side Whoa. slow down this will be us one day this will be us you get a sense of how low down you sit I love Boxsters I think I'd have a Boxster now over a 911 it's just so small and nimble and just perfect. Gear throw. Don't want to do too much to get us told off, but yeah, really is the perfect recipe. And down what is possibly the longest escalator of all time. Um, yeah, we could be here all day. I think perhaps this is where it could get dangerous. We're heading into the Porsche shop. Have you ever wanted yourself a pair of turbo sliders. It's not looking good. T-shirts are like 80 euros, something silly. So we've done the sensible thing, we've walked out. Uh, otherwise, it could get very expensive. So there you go, they were walking out the Porsche Museum. And as a, a serial Porsche lover, I think you like Porsches as well. That was a pretty surreal experience. Um, just, you know, going around and seeing the history, like the first cars ever made, right to the present day. Um, so I can recommend, if you're ever in Stuttgart, um, in Zoffenhausen, to definitely pay a visit here because it is amazing, outstanding. That's not it though, because later today, after we've had some lunch, we're heading to the Mercedes Museum, also in Stuttgart, so that is very exciting. Further lunchtime scram from Lidl. Panda's over there looking nice. We actually just passed another 100 HP by the museum, which was cool. And then Herbie went by, so that was even cooler. So we're driving through Stuttgart now, um, the centre of Stuttgart. Um, I was a little bit nervous about this, I can't lie, but it's actually a lot smaller than I thought it would be. So we're on route now after a quick lunch stop to the Mercedes Museum, uh, just on the other end of the low emission zone, but it's all right because I've got my sticker. Um, so yeah, we're excited for this. In fact, uh, you can see Mercedes on the right. So there you go, we're excited. So we're stuck in a bit of traffic in a tunnel, um, and this is all because tonight at 6 p.m., obviously today's the 5th of July, um, is Germany v Spain in the Euros in the football um, and a few people were saying to me oh why don't you get tickets why don't you go and see it and that's because I think Jake, Jacob's interested in football but I'm really not I'm really good <laughs> really not bothered but anyway it's interesting that we're, you know we're in the city when it's happening uh, so we might see some of the hustle and bustle I mean we are already um, it's quite trafficy but we're here for Mercedes ah, interesting turn of events
it was it's so interesting how the Germans are so clever when they see emergency services or hear it they instantly get to the side we really should be doing that in the UK we do in some places but yeah I really like that right so Panda's parked it's time to head into the museum well we're in and just like the Porsche Museum it starts with the early days obviously 1886 uh, to the 1900s pioneers and it shows obviously all of the early creations uh, by Carl Benz obviously Carl Benz made the first ever car um, so yeah starting very very early and then finishing in the present day with Formula One and stuff like that so yeah this is really exciting this is really weird it's like a hallucination so when it's on times one zoom it's like that I go on 0 0.5 and that's how it actually looks so when we zoom like that it looks like we're a 70s disco or something <laughs> and then when you go on 0 0.5 we're here at the Mercedes Museum. It's weird how you, know, you walk down here and there's all sorts of different shapes and sizes of you know, transport. And then eventually, you know, everywhere around the world just settled on this one familiar shape, obviously designed a little bit differently, but sort of the same concept. I find that really interesting because it could have gone in many different directions. And again, just like the Schumacher Museum we did the other day, you've got these like little windows with you know, steering wheels through the decades and gauges and spanners and stuff like that it's just really nice to see but we're now a little bit later in time we're in the 70s and we've got loads of trucks and stuff like that that they used back in the day um, but this really has caught my eye over here it's a car transporter with a load of period uh, correct Mercedes on the back now that is so cool that's really cool imagine being you know around back in the 70s, which, you know, a lot of people still are. It's not that long ago. Um, and, you know, seeing these drive down the road, um, this was just a normal sight. And now it's, you look at this and you go, wow, you know, I'm just talking out my backside. I really like this. I really, really like this. We were just saying before, we wonder whether these cars are, you know, have been used in the past and have been restored for the museum, or if when they were produced, they kept one aside. Um, we actually don't know. So if you know, write down in the comments because we're quite interested by this but I mean just look at the colour of this one wow I must admit when it comes to you know pre-war and 50s cars and stuff like that my knowledge isn't perfect um, but you can always appreciate the design and stuff like that because yeah Mercedes made some pretty legendary design uh, design cars you know over the years there's no doubt about that 300 SL with the gullwing doors and an absolutely stunning interior I mean just look at that the shine and the, you know, the red leather and everything. This is, you know, without a question, a dream car. You know, this is, this is fantastic. Um, and a real car that, you know, signifies the brand. They've got a Unimog on show as well. Now, I absolutely love these. I remember when, when I was growing up, I had a toy Unimog and it used to go around everywhere with me. It had a little, like a digger piece that you could, you know, move up and down. So yeah, these are very, very cool cars. Snow chains, obviously. A little rotavator thing on the front as well. But, yeah, this is a good floor, lots of emergency services. Uh, there's an ambulance thing there. Um, there's also a Polizei Mercedes estate car here. Um, yeah, that's cool, that's very cool. Got a bin lorry, is this a bin lorry? I think it's a bin lorry. You can actually see inside of it as well. This is a Mercedes C-Class, and it's not just any old C-Class, it's a FIA F1 medical car, and this was actually used from 2001 to 2003. So very cool to see this. It's actually got the doctor's uh, name on it as well. You can see inside, it's got all the racing harnesses and everything. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. V6 compressor. Um, now, I think there's an iconic video on, online actually of one of these safety cars or medical cars pulling over and then one of the F1 cars basically smashing the door off. Um, quite a sketchy time in Formula One. So we've got a 500 SL here now on English plates. Now I really do like these cars, but this is interesting, it's a G-Class, it was owned by the Pope and he sits in the back on this seat which looks a little bit bizarre and uh, yeah, he's nicely protected from the public and he gets to do his, you know, his waving to the people um, but yeah, it's 500 SL, I really like So there's me saying this car, this 500 SL is English it was owned by Princess Diana herself um, and yeah, there's a picture here, Princess Diana with her red Mercedes-Benz 500 SL in 1992 this Mercedes round here had um, US President Eisenhower in it once. And this Mercedes stretch one had Queen Elizabeth. So we're down in the new beginning section now, and this is the electric SLS. Now, I remember seeing this on Top Gear back in the day when Clarkson drove it against the V8 SLS. 
and I've really liked it. It was in that bright yellow colour. Um, but to be honest, I've heard nothing about these or seen any of these since. Um, obviously, it didn't enter production, as far as I'm aware. Um, so, yeah, cool to see this, though. But I think, even as an electric car fan, I'd take this car in V8 form. I was just saying to Jacob how much I like these. SLK 230 compressor um, in a lovely yellow colour as well. Um, but, yeah, just so compact, small, you know, roadster. Cars like these I really like. Jacob, what were you just saying about the A-Class? Uh, grandma car. Grandma car, you said it's, uh, yeah. I really like it. I really like it. I suppose just like the Audi A2 at the time, it was ahead of its time. You know, a lot of space inside for, you know, such a compact shape. Um, you know, similar to the i3 and stuff of, of today. Um, so, yeah. I, yeah, a little bit of a grandma car, Jacob, but I do quite like these. So this is the W11 Mercedes car, the 2020 car which secured Lewis Hamilton, his seventh world driver's title to match Schumacher. Um, and it's brilliant to see this car in the metal. You just realise how big these cars are. And here in the wall is the W12. Perhaps less sweet memories with this car. Obviously, Verstappen uh, took the championship that year and yeah, Lewis lost it just due to the old tyre issue and blah, blah, blah. Um, but here is the Constructors' Trophy, or replica, that Mercedes won in 2021 because they still achieved that. Um, obviously, a race suit and some gloves and stuff. Yeah, we were really excited to see this, the, the Formula One history, and they've got a whole little area for it, as well as all of the other motorsport vehicles, like the truck racers and stuff like that, so brilliant. So there you go then, we're now in the car park heading back to the Panda, but the Mercedes Museum was incredible. We were actually more excited for the Porsche one, but I'd say there was more to see in the Mercedes one. Um, it, was, it was vast, and it went from, you know, right from the early days, right to the present day, including concepts and stuff like that that you've never even heard of. So, yeah, if you're in Stuttgart, there's two places to go to go and see. So a really, really incredible day. We're looking around these uh, museums. We've been looking forward to this. And there you go then, our last day in Germany, or really the, the last night in Germany. Uh, tomorrow we are heading back into the land of France. We're heading back to France, uh, to Rem to be exact, for the final night of the road trip, which is really quite upsetting actually, because we've had the best week ever. But we've still got a bit of time to go, so we cannot dwell on, uh, you know, what has been. We can just be grateful it's happened. Um, so, yeah, it's been a fantastic day today. Uh, I really urge you, if you're a car fan, and you must be if you're watching this, um, or you're just really bored, if you like cars, definitely come to Stuttgart and do the Porsche and the Mercedes museums, because they're pretty cheap, to be honest. And if you're a student like me and Jacob, then it's even cheaper. I think the Porsche one worked out at eight euros each, um, because, you know, of, of students. And yeah, it's just the value for money is incredible. And you know, what you get to see is just so vast and so incredible. You leave the museum and you're just like, wow. You're searching Auto Trader for like the cheapest Porsche you can afford, um, which is what we've been doing all evening. So there you go. That's the end of this video, the day five vlog. Tomorrow is day six. It's absolutely flown by, but should be another exciting day on the road. Um, and hopefully a few things to see along the way. So remember to subscribe to the channel. And also, I haven't promoted this yet, check out the Daniel Drives podcast because we're going to be recording a new episode tomorrow evening um, whilst in REM talking about the week. So that'll be out on Monday for your ears. Um, but there's, I think there's three now, three other episodes you can feast your ears on. So that's pretty good. And you can follow me on social media at DanielCars85. So for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.